Without the ocean, we wouldn't be able to survive here on this planet. It's where 50% of our oxygen comes from. Uh, it's quickly dying, and so that should be a cause of alarm for a lot of people. Beyond that, it covers 71% of our planet. Most life is in the ocean. Just because we can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And we know basically nothing about it. So we're destroying something that we know nothing about. All the mysteries and benefits that it could have may, may soon be gone. The ocean is an unknown world. It's something that, as humans, that we haven't yet come to terms with how far it goes. We know more about what's up in the skies than what we know about what goes on under the water. When it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And one of the biggest imposing factors for the ocean is the fact that you can't see it. Everything goes on underneath, and we don't get the opportunity to really understand what's going on in there. Uh, it seems like all the red flags are out there and not too many people are listening right now. I'm not trying to make this super depressing, but this is just the reality of the situation. What is happening out there is affecting everything up here on land. So if we were to conserve the ocean and protect it, it's going to make things much better off on our planet and everyone's individual lives as a, as a whole. It seems like people need that what about me prospect to really get up and do something about it. But uh, you know, each person's life will be dramatically affected due to the health of the ocean. Throughout the tour, each state that we go to, I've looked at species which are threatened for their existence within each state. In some cities, it's been a lot of land. In some cities, it's touched their ocean or rivers. Now we're in Florida, which has got three borders all the way around the ocean in the Caribbean. The impact of the ocean on this land is detrimental. When climate change kicks in in full effect, this land could be gone. People living here are experiencing what it's like to see sea levels rise. Oceans are flooding the roads. In conjunction to that, species that are in the ocean are suffering hugely. You've got sharks that are suffering, there are fish that are suffering, the corals are suffering. Everything is having an effect due to the change in the temperatures in the water. So they are the only ones that you see here that um, we're not resting to rest. In the last 50 years or so, we've lost or stressed, kind of destroyed, about half the coral reefs that were in a healthy state 50 years ago. So now the big problem or the big challenge is to think how we can retain the other half. Reefs are incredibly special. In fact, about one third of all the marine species we know are found on a coral reef. They also provide a source of protein for about a half a billion people worldwide, and they protect shorelines on Pacific Islands during big storm events uh, from waves that cause a lot of erosion. We've lost most of the reefs from a combination of pollution and mostly over-exploitation or overfishing, and now increasingly from the effects of a shifting climate. This narrative can actually change direction. And that's because there are some thrillingly simple devices that we know work to rebuild fisheries on coral reefs and re-establish the ecological resilience and when reefs get really healthy and resilient, we know their chances of surviving climate change are much improved. I've been blessed on this trip with meeting so many cool people, so many scientific people, people that have given me the opportunity to understand about a species before I paint it and there wasn't a time more pure than in Miami to do that. I met Elizabeth from the Defenders of Wildlife and she had a chat with me where the wild manatee are. I can single-handedly say that it was the deepest experience painting that manatee purely based on the fact that two days prior I was witnessing manatee in the wild and then at a conservation place we met a manatee that squished his face up against the glass and through the glass, we touched 
And it wasn't a question of touching like skin to skin, it was, there was an understanding there. That carried with me into the painting. And so the creation of the painting became more connection for me to the species that I was creating. That's the first time I've had that experience. Many manatees in Florida are hit by boats. Um, this year, uh, I believe 95 manatees have been killed by boats. The record was in the late 1990s with 97 manatees killed by boats, so we may surpass that. Researchers look to the scars on the manatees to be able to distinguish individual manatees. They have a pattern. That's a way to identify individuals throughout research across the the world on different species. They look for identifying marks or patterns, and in this case, the, those marks and patterns are caused by either boat propellers or a blunt force trauma from getting hit by the hull of a boat. They are maintaining, they're resilient. We throw a lot of threats in their direction, and because of the, the very good conservation work that many, many entities have coordinated in the past few decades, we're seeing some success. One of the things that upsets me the most about the ocean is the sheer amount of plastic that gets pumped into it on a daily basis. And people are not aware of it. And one of the fantastic things about the guys that are supporting us EcoAlf is that through their products and their clothes, they're able to highlight the fact that that plastic and that fishing net is coming from out the ocean and that it's being turned into a fabric and then we are wearing it. And if more companies can take on that business plan and see that as a role model for a more productive way of A, producing their garments and B, the source of their materials, then we've got a solution to a problem that we have. There is an abundance of plastic made in this planet. There is an abundance of that plastic in the ocean. If we can take it out of the ocean and turn it into clothes back on land, and we solve two problems. That's an amazing thing. In the last nine weeks, we've met people from all different demographics and walk of life. We've met young people, old people, indigenous people, people from other lands who have settled here. Everyone that we've met always has the same understanding that we need to come together and we need to fight for what is a way forward for the environment. No one is happy about the way in which it's going at the moment and there is a collective understanding of things moving forward, but we need to do it together. The reason for calling this tour the art of being was because I want people to be more bee-like. Within a community inside the hive, every bee has a role and every bee relies upon the other bee to make sure that it's doing its job properly. The bees are going out every single day and they're pollinating, they're keeping this planet stitched together. If people can take on that mindset of the bee, then perhaps we can start to stitch our planet back up together and start to fix the problems that we've made. Please, mankind, help out this species like your brothers the bees are doing. We're all in this together. We need them, they need us, that species needs us, we need them. We can learn from the rest of the animal kingdom, but we have to listen to it first. And if there's ever a time that it's shouting at us the loudest, it's now.